Hey, what's up everyone? Brandon Lee. Today's video is all about Kubernetes HA and specifically K3S Kubernetes clusters running in an HA configuration. I'm going to highlight for you guys today two free and open source utilities that allow you to easily spin up K3S Kubernetes clusters and have HA for your control plane. So stick around, we're going to dive headfirst into Kubernetes HA using free and open source utilities. The first free and open source utility that we want to highlight today is a command line utility that looks like it's spelled K3S up. However, according to the developer, Alex Ellis, the pronunciation is ketchup. So ketchup is an awesome tool. A tremendous shout out to Alex Ellis on this awesome tool that we can use to easily spin up K3S clusters with a control plane or any number of control nodes as well as any number of worker nodes. And you can do this in just a matter of seconds all from the command line as we're going to take a look at. The second utility is a utility called kubevip. This is an awesome utility for those that are running bare metal Kubernetes servers that are self-hosted. It allows us to essentially have the functionality that Kubernetes was designed to pull from the cloud. And that is a virtual IP address for your control plane, as well as a load balancer for your services that you're running inside of your Kubernetes cluster. KubeVip satisfies both of those use cases. So let's take a look at Ketchup as well as KubeVip. Using Ketchup is extremely easy. In fact, you just simply curl the executable down to your administrative workstation. Once we have the executable for Ketchup, then it's simply a matter of making sure that we have SSH access using public key authentication to our target K3S nodes. So to get started with Ketchup, the first thing that we're going to do is paste a couple of commands into our terminal. As you can see, what I'm simply doing is just issuing a curl command to pull down the Ketchup executable. Then what we're going to do is move or install that executable into our user local bin directory. The Ketchup executable has been downloaded and this tells us that we have the Ketchup executable and utility correctly installed so we can start working with our K3S cluster. As we mentioned, Ketchup works off the principle of having an SSH connection that uses public key authentication. We want to make sure that we have indeed set up public key authentication. As you can see, I've already set up a public and private key using the SSH keygen command. And I'm not going to completely go back through this process. On your workstation, whether this is Windows or Linux, you can run the SSH keygen command and generate your private key pair. After you have your public private key pair, what we need to do at that point is actually copy the public private key pair to our K3S nodes. And this is so that we can easily connect to each of the K3S nodes using the ketchup command. So I'm going to simply type in the root user that I want to associate with this SSH public key pair. And we're going to type in the password, have it added. I'm going to roll through the other two hosts. And again, we're simply copying that authorized key to the resulting K3S host that we're going to connect to using the Ketchup utility. So just to review, we have downloaded the Ketchup utility. We have copied it to the user local bin folder, and now we have set up our public key authentication so that we can use Ketchup to easily connect to each of our target K3S hosts and set up our Kubernetes cluster. So the next step in this process is to actually create our K3S Kubernetes cluster using the Ketchup utility. Let's now actually create our Kubernetes cluster using the Ketchup utility. 
and that is accomplished using a simple command line string. And we'll go through all of the options that we have displaying here. So we're going to, first of all, use the Ketchup utility to install a Kubernetes cluster. The IP address for this node that we are going to connect to is 10.1.149.123. So you're telling Ketchup, I want you to connect to this node and we're going to install the Kubernetes cluster on this node. We're going to also, importantly, use this command line argument. I'll make this larger so we can see it a little bit better. We're going to use this TLS SAND option to specify the IP address. And this will be important as we're going to use this IP address in our kubevip installation and configuration uh, so that we have that virtual IP address set up for our cluster. So again, we're setting up a cluster. We're using the root user uh, location for kubeconfig. We're giving it a context of K3SHA. And then we're also going to use the extra arguments, disable the service load balancer. In other words, we were telling uh, K3S we, we don't want to use the built-in service load balancer as we are going to provide one ourselves. And we're going to tell it again the node IP, the IP address 10.1.149.123. So let's run this command and the Ketchup utility will connect to our remote host. And again, as you remember, we set up the uh, public key authentication to this host. And so it's now uh, running the remote configuration script on our soon to be K3S master node. If we actually enter a kubectl get nodes, uh, it's still coming up, creates that control plane node. Uh, so as we can see, it went to a ready state. That is the first step. We now have a master node in our uh, K3S high availability cluster. As you recall, we passed in that parameter for the TLS SAN. Now that is important on our next step. Now that we have that control node configured using the Ketchup utility, we're now going to pivot to kubevip, and then we're going to return back to the Ketchup utility to finish out our cluster. However, now we want to actually spin up that virtual IP address using the kubevip solution. First, we need to get kubevip up and running. The first step with that is to actually upload and apply the RBAC manifest. Kubevip runs as a daemon set under K3S and it doesn't run as a static pod as it does in other configurations. So we need to, we have the required permissions that are needed for it to communicate with the API server of our Kubernetes cluster. That is a simple command. We can use kubectl to apply the rbac.yaml file that is simply downloaded from the kubevip.io site. So let's run this command and we're going to have the cluster role binding created. Now that we have applied our RBAC configuration, the next step is to pull the latest kubevip image file. To do that, I'm going to SSH into the control node. Now that we are at the control node, I'm going to issue the command to pull the latest Docker image for kubevip. Once the latest image is pulled, we are going to, according to the documentation, we are going to create an alias for the kubevip command that we need to run. And that command is an alias command for kubevip. And as you can see, the command line parameters that we're going to pass in to create this alias. And this is going to make it much easier when we need to uh, move forward with the configuration. So we've created our alias is to actually create our daemon set for kubevip. And that command contains a few parameters that should make sense. As you can see, we are assigning the interface and the address should look familiar from the TLS SAN that we set up earlier, 10.1.149.126. This is telling kubevip that this is the virtual IP address that we want to configure for the kubevip configuration. This is for our control plane. It's using leader election to decide on who owns that virtual IP address. And also we're using the K3S kubevip YAML file here. So let's run our daemon set. Okay, so that is created. Now what's interesting is we can go and actually start pinging the IP address and we should start seeing pings reply for this IP address. And that is so cool. 
So this tells us that that daemon set has indeed spun up, and we can confirm that if we go to kubectl get daemon sets, and we're going to look, we see the kube vip daemon set. The desired count is one, current is one, ready is one, available is one. And as we saw, you saw it go from destination host unreachable to returning pings from that virtual IP address. So that's awesome. We have our kube vip virtual IP configured and ready to go. The final step of this process, believe it or not, is simply adding the remaining control nodes to our K3S HA cluster. To join the remaining nodes as control nodes in our K3S cluster, I have gone back to my Linux administrative workstation, leaving the SSH session that I had to the first control node. We now need to use Ketchup to join the remaining two nodes as control plane nodes to our K3S cluster. And that command to do that is the ketchup join command. We tell ketchup the IP address of the additional node that we want to add as a control plane node. And the control plane node is defined based on the server parameter. And again, notice the server IP that we're using. It is the virtual IP in this case. Since we are now correctly pinging that virtual IP address, we should be able to use it to join the remaining nodes. Again, we're disabling the service load balancer, telling it the node IP address. Ketchup now connects to our remote node and it downloads the K3S binaries, runs the remote scripts and starts K3S. And there we go. The second node has now been joined to the K3S cluster using Ketchup. The remaining step is simply to rinse and repeat. And I'm going to join my remaining node, which is dot 125. And the final node has been successfully joined to our K3S cluster. And now what we can do is we can look at kubectl, we can get nodes, and there we see all three nodes are now control plane nodes. Something we want to do is edit our kube config file. Since we spun up the initial node, Ketchup has copied down and configured our kubectl configuration to point to that first node. So I want to go in and edit that. As you can see, it has the IP address of the first node. We want to go in and change this to the kubevip virtual IP address. And we're gonna make sure and save. And then we should be able to issue the kubectl get nodes and it return correctly. This tells us that we are now speaking to the virtual IP address to interact with the API. Awesome. Since our end goal with kubevip is to have a high availability K3S cluster, we want to actually test and make sure that we do indeed have high availability for that virtual IP address. What I'm going to do is disconnect the network card from that first master node that we spun up. As I know, this node is the one that owns the virtual IP address. We should see the virtual IP address shift from that node to another node and then any dropped pings should start returning once again. Okay, so I've started the ping on the virtual IP address 10.1.149.126. So what I'm going to do is disconnect the network adapter from the control plane node that owns the virtual IP address. And let's see what happens. So it looks like the pings have stopped and we should see that virtual IP address fail over in just a couple of seconds. And there we go, it has correctly failed over. Now we are returning pings and we know that it has failed over the virtual IP address since we have disconnected that first control node's network card. High availability when it comes to Kubernetes clusters and the cluster API is the only way to go, especially if you're running Kubernetes in production. What do you think about Ketchup as well as kubevip? Hopefully you guys have enjoyed seeing both of these awesome utilities so that you can easily spin up both a K3S high availability cluster as well as virtual IP addresses and service load balancing in your Kubernetes cluster. Well, I hope you enjoyed this video. Please do like the video, subscribe to the channel. Well, take care guys, stay safe, happy home labbing, and I will see you guys soon.